If you're teaching large groups of students and you feel like you're lacking interaction between yourself and students, why not try social media? Keep in mind that what social media does better than any tool available at the moment is social interactions between users. If you simply want to collect individual reflections or answers from students, there are many digital tools that you can use, but I wouldn't suggest social media. If you want your students to interact with each other, then social media might be the right choice for you. Different kinds of assignment, both group and individual ones, can be shared during, before or after a lecture as a way to document the learning process of the student. And I certainly hope that if you choose to include social media in your teaching, remember to also include it in your assessment of the student. You can use social media for different purposes. A closed Facebook group might be excellent for more sensitive discussion topics or group exams. If you use a more open environment such as Twitter or Instagram, make sure that your students follow different people that can offer different perspectives on different topics. You can be part of a conversation anytime and anywhere, and so can your students. Your students can individually or collaboratively work on texts, pictures, videos and share with the rest of the group. But they can also share information that someone else has made. They can comment, they can like. There are many different ways to interact in social media. One issue with social media is student integrity. Social media companies want as much information as possible about their users for marketing purposes. One way around this is to allow students to use a fake username. Most social media are also quite cumbersome to administer, which is why I ask you in this course to collect all the links to your blog posts and your comments in a document that you send to me. It's impossible for me to keep track of all students and every assignment or every comment you've made. The flow of information may be hard to follow and it may also distract your students from the content that you're trying to focus on during your lecture or during a seminar. As with any discussion, it's important to give the students time to reflect and to discuss whatever it is you want them to reflect and discuss, and then let them share it, comment, like it, and take time to also comment whatever reflections or perhaps questions you might find in the stream of information. The stream of information builds upon several users taking part in a conversation. And if it's only a teacher and two or three students, it might get boring. On the other hand, the information might be easier to overlook if you're only a few people, and you might want to consider collaborating with colleagues or people outside the university so that your students can interact with a lot of different people, not only the teacher and the group.